live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Chicago, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and you're watching our exclusive coverage of Veeam On 2018, hashtag Veeam On. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my co-host, Stuart Miniman. Stu, great to be working with you again. Thanks, Dave. Admiral David G. Simpson is here. He's the former Chief Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau and CEO currently of Polaris, a consultancy that helps organizations think through some of the risk factors that they face. David, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for taking time Thanks. out. It's my pleasure to be here. So, as I was saying, we, we missed a big chunk of your keynote this morning because we had to come back to theCUBE and, and do our open, but um, let's start with your background and kind of why you're here. Sure, well, I spent uh, over three decades uh, in the Navy uh, where my responsibilities throughout included the resiliency of the ability to command and control forces in areas around the world not always so nice uh, and um, uh, often arduous uh, and uh, often at sea. Uh, so that experience uh, really um, has given me a very good appreciation, not only for how important continuity of operations is, but uh, how difficult it can be and how important the details are. Uh, so I am a, a natural fan of what Veeam is doing to make that easier for organizations. Uh, after DOD, um, I uh, was recruited by the chairman of the FCC to lead the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau for the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, and in uh, that position, I had responsibility for the nation's 911 system, emergency alerting, and the resiliency of over 30,000 telecommunication companies uh, in the domestic market. Uh, so both experiences really have given me uh, a, a very good insight into uh, the, the, the need, the consequence of not getting it right, uh, how to prepare to get it right, but also an ability to uh, look at what's coming down the pike with the new telecommunications technologies that will really be game changers uh, for functionality uh, in the new Internet of Things environment. So, three decades of public service. First of all, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's quite an accomplishment. And then, we talked off camera that we, uh, a couple years ago, had Robert Gates on, and we were get, getting you know, detailed into how the experiences that someone like you has had in the public sector translate into the private sector. It used to be there was just such a huge gap between you know, what you did and what a, what a company had to, had to worry about. Do you see that gap closing, and maybe you could add some color to that? Sure, and in particular in the cyber arena, you know, cyber, unlike the land, sea, and air domains, uh, is a domain of uh, man's own making, and the constraints around that domain are uh, of our own choosing. Uh, and we're not constrained by physics, we're constrained by the, uh, the, the, the investment decisions we make and the contours of that expanding environment. But the internet started out as a DOD research and development project, right. DARPA. So uh, it has uh, not been unusual for uh, DOD to be out in front in some of the development aspects uh, where counterintuitively we would normally see I industry out in front. The same occurred, I believe, with cyber, when our intelligence community over 10 years ago said, uh, hey, this is a great thing, this internet thing, and it's uh, uh, super that we're doing more and more communications, that we're talking with devices at the edge uh, uh, around the battle space, but it's vulnerable to attack. Uh, and we need to organize so that we are capable in the defense of that great cyber set of functionality that we've built. I, I could, could, could you expand just so you're doing some teaching in the cybersecurity mm -hmm. world too, maybe share a little bit what you're doing, what you see is kind of the state yeah, of, well, uh, well, of this today. Well thank you for asking that. Uh, about a year ago, the uh, dean of the business school at Virginia Tech uh, uh, asked me if I wouldn't consider uh, building a cyber program for the business school. Tech has always had a strong engineering component to cybersecurity, uh, and it's led by a good friend of mine, Dr. Charles Clancy, uh, with some su superb research going on. But increasingly, uh, over two-thirds of the work roles in cybersecurity are not engineering. 
they really have much more to do with traditional business functions, uh, yet uh, most business leaders aren't well prepared to uh, assess that risk environment, let alone appreciate it, and then drive investments to uh, address risk reduction. So at Virginia Tech, we've uh, uh, built a series of four courses that in the MBA programs, the Masters of Accounting, the, the uh, Masters of Business IT, uh, we uh, are now teaching uh, prospective business leaders how to look at the risk environment and uh, organize an investment structure using the uh, NIST or uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, risk management framework uh, so that can be done in a repeatable way that uh, communicates well with, with industry. And companies like Veeam uh, have uh, a, an important role to play in that space because Veeam really translates much of the engineering complexity into uh, business understandable conditions uh, by which uh, decisions about that data space can really be made. I want to um, share an observation that we had on theCUBE last year. One of my favorite interviews was with a gentleman from ICIT, uh, James Scott, he's a security expert, you may know him. And we asked him what the biggest threat was to the you know, United States. And his answer surprised me. I thought it was going to be you know, cyber warfare or you know, uh, risks to critical infrastructure. He said the weaponization of social media was the number one threat. I was like, wow, and we had a really interesting discussion about that. And you know, I, th I think of you know, your background, loose lips sink ships, people on social give up their credentials, all of a sudden you've got some outside bad actors controlling the narrative, controlling the meme, and controlling the population without firing a shot. Wow, so what are your thoughts on social media and its risk to our society and how to deal with it? Well, uh, we're seeing in the last year that it was very prescient, uh, right? Uh, and that you can lock down uh, all the bits and the bytes uh, and uh, get the integrity, the confidentiality, and the availability of your data sets taken care of. But in a world where the uh, public square, if you will, is now a virtual public square, uh, if an adversary can change the perception of reality in that public square, or if they can cause our democracy to lose confidence in that public square, then an adversary can really achieve a kill, uh, if you will, a, a desired uh, effect uh, in a way uh, that is very negative for the country. So uh, I don't see that though as, as um, being completely distinguished from cybersecurity. I, I see, in my mind, that we need to expand the universe, the protected universe of cyber, into that cognitive space. And we need to understand, uh, increasingly, the origin of uh, uh, comment uh, in the, the, the social media arena. We need to understand uh, the role algorithms have to play in amplifying message and suppressing other messages. Uh, and we need to, uh, I think, uh, have a greater accountability for businesses that uh, are in that virtual public square line of business uh, to uh, uh, help uh, consumers and communities um, continue to have confidence uh, in that public square. And uh, we're, we're challenged in that area. You yeah. can see Mark Zuckerberg's testimony, right? Which sure. illuminated uh, 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 some big challenges there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my heart went out to Zuckerberg. It was, I was like, the poor guy, he's just trying to build out a social network and now he's getting you know, attacked by politicians who are saying, wow, you mean you use data for political gain or something, you allowed somebody to do So well, it, he was in a tough spot. And politicians themselves, I, I, I think, uh, were a, a bit embarrassed in revealing their mm -hmm. lack of tech savvy uh, in a world where we should expect uh, policymakers to uh, be at least aware enough of the uh, parameters around uh, the, the virtual public square uh, where they can help develop the, the, the right policy to ensure that this continues to be a net asset uh, for the United States, uh, for communities, and for consumers. The technology kind of got us into this problem, but it, technology in and of itself is not going to get, out of, get us out of this problem. Right. Um, it's, it's, others in the organization, the lines of business, the policies, the practices, some of the work that you do 
uh, in your teachings. Maybe comment. Yeah, it, 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 absolutely. Uh, uh, and uh, when I talk to aspiring business leaders, uh, I communicate a, a couple of things to them. Uh, one, they need to get their heads out of uh, being the decider as the CEO. Increasingly, they will be creating decision environments, uh, right, where decision operations occur and are driven by algorithms, uh, by machine learning and uh, AI. Uh, and so they've got to be thinking about how do they create those environments to uh, uh, deliver the right kind of decision results that they're, they're looking for. The second piece that I talked to them about that's counterintuitive is that uh, they need to, as they bring in uh, network functional virtualization and, and more and more software oriented things that used to be hardware, uh, they've got to understand the risk exposure from that and uh, bring in, bake in a, a, a way to address cyber risk uh, as they uh, introduce n new functionality in the market. Well, I, it's interesting, uh, uh, Admiral talking about network function virtualization, I'm very impressed. <laughs> Admiral Simpson, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, sure. Really a pleasure having you and, and best of luck in your work. Well thank you and it's great to be here with the Veeam professionals that I think are really building a command and control layer of an enterprise's data space uh, that will be very important for the future. All right, okay, thanks for watching everybody. We will be right back, Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante from Veeamon 2018. You're watching theCUBE. Great, thanks.